So, very briefly, and then we'll throw this open to audience, I just wanted to just cover a couple of points. Uh, Nick's really covered pretty much everything that we need to say, uh, but I just want to talk you to a couple of additional things that are worth mentioning. Um, so, what we've got planned for you over the next hour uh, in the lead up to lunch is to basically have a Q&A session uh, around these five points, which, which Nick has kindly uh, discussed already. So we want to get your feedback on these five points. We're going to go through them one by one, and we're going to, uh, basically, Nick is going to come, he doesn't know this yet, Nick's going to come up and share this session. Uh, we're going to use the PowerPoint slides to actually change um, kind of evolve and develop uh, these topics. So I will be writing and editing while you guys are feeding back so we can see how your thoughts are influencing specific topics, but we will work it like a Q&A session and we'll see how we go. So we'll have about 10 minutes on each subject, all will become clear as we, as we go along. But just a couple of things I wanted to pick up on. So these are the five topics that we're going to cover uh, during the session. So I just wanted to kind of mention that it's worth bearing in mind that the current organisation is, um, its pillars if you like, are based on the Planet Well rating system. Um, so this kind of stands behind the things that we try to do, the things that we try to achieve. And for those that aren't familiar with it, these are the five points, so, um, which we spent a lot of time thinking about. It may not be perfect, but it's a safe approach to Wales involving this valuable learning experience that fits meet customers' expectations, uh, that we have a minimal impact on the marine environment, and that we have a focus on research or conservation or protection of cetaceans in some way through our businesses that was what we felt was an essential element of being a responsible whale watch operator. It's also worth bearing in mind that uh, at the Brisbane meeting of the, of the partnership, uh, a new, an independent and self-developed name for the organisation was discussed and that three, these three names uh, were proposed as options for uh, Global Whale Watch Partnership, the Global Whale Watch Association and the International Whale Watch Partnership. We'll come back to this, it's all part of our discussion. Uh, proposed strap line, again, we can discuss it further. Promoting responsible whale and dolphin watching worldwide. Um, one of the big sort of issues amongst the partners has been um, we need to be careful that we're not misleading the public um, with our current name and our current branding. That we are, you know, it's called the Responsible Whale Watch Partnership at the moment, but we actually want to welcome to the partnership businesses that aren't necessarily incredibly responsible because it's aspirational. Um, we don't want to be exclusive, we want to bring everybody in and once people are in, they understand and learn from partners and, and hopefully move forward. So. We didn't want this to be an exclusive club just for the very best. And call yourself the responsible whale watch partnership. Obviously, the public are going to assume that all operators are right up there from the very beginning. How do we overcome that? How do we make sure that we are clear to the public what we are, but also what we aspire to be? Um, I think it's also just worth mentioning uh, the kind of government structure and operating framework of the organisation. Now, obviously, you've seen that we have. Uh, the steering committee has literally just started. Uh, we, we've uh, developed regional representation, uh, at least the beginnings of, but we have to think a little bit more long term about how we function. And uh, this is something that will come up in the next conference, but um, we, Ian and myself at Planet Whale, get a lot of advice from the BirdLife International Partnership, which is the largest global partnership for conservation organisations on the planet. They've been through this over the last 20 years, so it's worth just mentioning this model as kind of to give you some kind of a guidance. Could responsible whale watch partnership follow a similar um, <coughs> pattern? Um, and basically, um, the BirdLife partnership has a secretariat, which um, you know helps to support the partnership as we do at Planet Whale currently. Uh, it is absolutely focused on the grassroots. The regional partnership really runs, the regional partners run the partnership of the BirdLife partnership. So you can see up at the top here, uh, we have the regional partners split into Africa, Americas, Asia, Europe and Central Asia, Middle East and the Pacific. And those partners, again, really important to point out, all from the grassroots, are electing uh, individual candidates to a global council. Um, 
the council meets twice a year to discuss the, the global issues and wider issues and feed those issues back um, to the, the regions. Um, and then finally, uh, there are regional committee councils that also meet in the region. So for example, meeting in Europe or meeting in North America. And they meet not based on a specific once a year or twice a year, but as they feel the need, uh, the, the need is there to meet and discuss their uh, issues. And then finally, there is a, a global meeting which invites all of the partners, and that is on a once in every four year cycle. So I'm just kind of raising this because you know, I know that you guys, we all have limited resources, you know, in terms of finances and time. We can't be travelling across the world every single year and there are other events and conferences to go to. This is their strategy for being able to meet and get the work done at a regional level, but also finding time every four years, for example, to make sure everybody's in the same room and we all move forward together and keep that energy low going. So it's it is just one concept of many. Uh, very, very briefly, for those people that don't know, the Responsible Whale Watch Partnership is 100% funded through membership fees of the partners. We have tried uh, to make this uh, as fair as we possibly can. We currently have a two-tier system in terms of where uh, Whale Watch operators are based. So, uh, in one of the best phrase, uh, developing countries or developing parts of the world, the, the partnership fee is effectively more or less half. Uh, the fee um, in uh, the developed world in Western nations. So um, in uh, North America, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, Japan, the fee is $1,365 US dollars. But in South America, or Latin America, Asia, Africa, Central America, Caribbean, it's uh, $645 at the moment. There's also a higher tier, which um, for the first time we've done it but this year, they pay about a third again. And that's for uh, those companies which have already submitted to the Responsible Whale Watch Report. Uh, and they, once they achieve that, are able to join the steering committee. Uh, but they didn't pay more for that review. So that's the current setup. We are always open to ideas and thoughts on this. Um, and then finally, I think the big issue which we've alluded to, improving communication uh, between the partners and between meetings. 